When we face hardship, we're sometimes tempted to become bitter and to drop out of the race. We're tempted to huddle in a corner and sometimes feel like we want to give up. And yet there's a great blessing that God gives us when we take responsibility for where we are and we see God's kindness and his faithfulness to us in our lives. Things are tough, I know, but whatever you're going through right now, know the Lord cares about you and he's here for you in your life. Know that he loves you. Know that he's here for you. Know that he's available to you. And here are three things to do in hard times from the books of Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah that the Lord is going to use to bless you and help you during this time of hardship in your life. So three things to do in hard times from the books of Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah. We're almost done going through the Old Testament books. Three things to do in hard times in your life that the Lord is going to use to strengthen you. It's when you do these things, the Lord will strengthen you in your heart. The first thing is continue on to see God's safety. Continue, persevere to see God's safety in your life. Over a hundred years after the Lord spared Nineveh through the preaching of Jonah, we learned about that recently. Jonah came and preached destruction to the people of Nineveh, yet the people repented and the Lord uh, loved showing mercy to them. Well, over a hundred years after that, the children and grandchildren of that generation turned away from the Lord in their lives. And the Lord said through the prophet Nahum that he would judge Nineveh because of its brutality and its idolatry. By this time, the next succeeding generations turned away from the Lord, and yet Nahum held out this promise of hope, of continued safety for all who would trust in the Lord. He said, the Lord is good. God isn't bad, God is good. God isn't unrighteous, God is righteous. He said, the Lord is good a stronghold in the day of trouble. He's a fortress, he's a stronghold. And he went on to say, and he knows those who take refuge in him. So even though disaster was going to come, God knew all who would take refuge in him, and he would be a shelter and a stronghold to them in their lives. Continue to see the Lord's safety in your life. As you experience hardship and uncertainty, know the Lord will continue to be a fortress to you and for you in your life because he cares about you so much. Jesus died to pay for all of your sins on the cross. He took away, he took out of the way your greatest enemy of sin and death. He took judgment away from you and condemnation and he has his eye on you for your good for your blessing, for your encouragement, even during these difficult times. Despite whatever else is happening in your life, know the Lord will never fail you. Continue to trust him. Continue to see his safety and encourage your children and grandchildren during this difficult time to see Jesus' safety for them as well and for their blessing. So three things to do in hard times. The first thing is, Continue to see God's safety. Don't give up because things are hard. No matter what's going on around you, continue to see his safety for you and for those in your life. The second thing is trust God through the hard times. Trust him through the hard times. He'll get you through. Just keep looking to him. Just keep trusting. In response to the prophet Habakkuk questioning God's justice, the Lord revealed that Babylon would overtake Judah but that the Lord would also overtake Babylon. So the Lord was giving Habakkuk a lesson at that time. And Habakkuk then said that even though times are hard, that he would trust in the Lord. Even though times are hard, he would trust in the Lord. He said, though the fig tree should not blossom and there be no fruit on the vines, so even if the trees are not producing figs, which were very, very important, and even if the vines didn't produce grapes, didn't do what they were supposed to at that time, he said, though the yield of the olive should fail, 
and the fields produce no food. There is not an abundance of grain. There is not a harvest. Though the flock should be cut off from the fold, and there be no cattle in the stalls, that the herds of goats and the herds of sheep were not producing. He said, Yet I will exalt in the Lord. Yet I will exalt in the Lord. And he re reiterated that sentiment. He said, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Even though things aren't going well, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. I'm going to rejoice in the God of my salvation. He said, the Lord God is my strength. And then he said, and he has made my feet like hinds feet and makes me walk on my high places. A hind is a female deer and it's remarkable to watch a deer on the top of a mountain on a high place. This four-legged animal putting its hoofs in these crevices and these rocks to balance itself. It's really a remarkable thing to see that. It's a testimony of the dexterity, the creation of God. And what the Lord is saying is that as you rejoice in the Lord, He's going to make you, He's going to make you walk on those high places with agility. Trust God through the hard times in your life. Trust Him through the most difficult things that you're experiencing. It was important for plants to produce figs and grapes and olives and for flocks of sheep and goats to be healthy and strong just as today things are so important for us. It's important for us to have good health and good food and shelter for us and clothes. It's important for us. And as we face hardship today, let's exult in the Lord and rejoice in the God of our salvation. Rejoice in the God of your salvation. He's your God. He has redeemed you. And the Lord will strengthen you. He'll make your feet like hinds feet. He'll give you that stability like the deer on the top of the mountain. You'll be able to walk on high places. And the Lord will help you and he'll bless you and get you through this time in your life. And so three things to do in hard times. Continue to see God's safety. Continue to see the Lord's safety in your life. Trust God through the hard times. Trust him through the hard times. And the third thing is know that you have God's favor. Know that you have his favor in your life. That he is favorably disposed toward you. In the book of Zephaniah, the prophet Zephaniah spoke of judgment during the reign of King Josiah is when he spoke. King Josiah was a good king of Judah. And King Josiah found the law of God and wanted the nation to go into conformity with that law. And so even though there was this message of judgment, Zephaniah also proclaimed God's favor and grace. Zephaniah said that God's people can shout for joy because the Lord has removed his judgments against us. He said that God would exult over us with joy and rejoice over us with shouts of joy. Truly remarkable. King Josiah was a good king. Yes, Judah had sinned in their idolatry, but Josiah wanted to help. And just as he discovered God's law, just as King Josiah went forward to remove the idolatry, Jesus has cleared the way for the Lord's goodness in your life. Jesus has come to you in your life. He lived a good life that you could never live, that I could never live. And then he died and paid for all of your sins on the cross and rose again to assure you by his promise of eternal life that no matter how much you fall short of the glory of God, as all of us fall short of his glory, that you're now justified in Jesus because you believe in him, you trust in him. His righteousness covers you like a cloak. God has wrapped you up in Jesus' goodness and righteousness. And you have favor with God. You have favor with God in your life. And so Jesus rose again and he comes to exult over you with joy. He rejoices over you with shouts of joy. He loves you. He cares about you. You were the lost sheep who went the wrong way and he came and sought you. 
And he took you and found you, and he put you upon his shoulders, and he began to rejoice over you. And then he's the angels of heaven to rejoice over you as well, because he's so good to you. You're a trophy of his kindness, a trophy of his grace. Know you have the Lord's favor in your life during this time of hardship, and know that you can always pray with joy in your heart, Jesus, thank you for accepting me. Thank you for accepting me. So trust the Lord through the hard times in your life, whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing right now, whatever you went through this last week, these last two weeks, this last month that was difficult to deal with, know the Lord is with you. And do these three things, do these three things in your life. Continue to see God's safety. Continue to see what Jesus has done for you and see him as a fortress and refuge for you. Continue to do that in your life. The second thing is trust God through the hard times. Don't let the hard times make you stop. Continue to persevere and tell your children and grandchildren to do that as well. And then the third thing is to know that you have God's favor because of Jesus. You don't have to try to earn God's favor. You have it already because of Jesus for you. And as you and I do these things, it's going to be a great blessing in our lives this coming week. It's going to be a blessing for us because he's going to strengthen us on the inside. He's going to make our feet like hinds feet on the high places where we can navigate through things because the Lord is with us and he's helping us and he's blessing us. We're going to have that encouragement because we're taking refuge in God as our fortress and our stronghold. And we're going to say that the Lord is with me. The Lord is my strength. And we're going to rejoice and exult in the God of our salvation. So let's pray together. Lord, we thank you and bless you for being with us through the difficult times, God, for shepherding us and being with us. We thank you that you make our feet like hinds feet, like the feet of a deer, Lord, on high places. And Lord, no matter what faces us this next week, I ask, Lord, for my dear church family that your richest blessings would be with them, Lord, to face these things and to help them, Lord, to get through these things and to strengthen them in each and through each and everything. Lord, we lift you, lift you up as our God and Master and Savior, and we glorify you now. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, amen.